ahead. See your friend. See your friend going over there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, snow kitten. This is the middle. Bring her on over. I'm very good at this. Gosh, Fred, where are you, dear? There you are. I know that's a... Susie, look at me, darling. Oh, gosh. <laughs> like snow lizard. Snow lizard. Yeah. Snow gecko. Wait a minute. Go around there. But how are you going to get down here? We'll do it the same way we did last year. Roll it up? Yeah. But that's going to be bigger than the bottom part of it. Oh, God, oh, Fred, that's big, dear. Forward. They won't knock it down on me. Susan's making a little kitten, is she? Well, I don't know what the hell it is, but it's not looking like a kitten. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, Fred, he's God, Fred. Don't they're gonna knock it down. On me. How did you get up the other time? Oh, I made a little incline. <laughs> you rolled it up. There's Tara over there. God, I don't know, Doris. I'm not getting this. Come off. That's pretty good. That's a dead snow kitten. Roadkill. <laughs> okay, we'll have to roll it back a little bit. Okay. Fred, should you not cut part of the base off to make a flatter uh, okay, surface? We'll work on it once we get up there. Okay, they're trying to get it up now. There they go. Oh. <laughs> the okay, one, two, knee. Hold. <laughs> one, two, knee. <laughs> oh. oh. One, two, knee. <laughs> I can't move it any further. Oh, second. One, two, knee. Oh. One, two, It's going to be a casualty. <laughs> Ready? One, two, three. 
<laughs> oh no! Hey, hold, wait for a second. <laughs> oh god, Fred, let me see you, dear. Okay. Surface. Oh, we have here. Oh, no, not the cat. No. Oh dear. We got cut some of Okay, hold. No. We need. Not the hold on. Hold on. I got it, Sue. I cannot get. God, this, this seems to blur on me, Fred. Why is it blurring, dear? Oh, hey. I think, uh, wait, wait, we're trying we'll try a gentle incline. Too, too much no, I think we're going to have to make this one. I think it's the base of both of them. Okay. This is the base of them. Let's try. A little gentle at each I think it's, it's, I'm not getting it now. It's too blurry. But it's too big. Well, there we are. Well, this will be easy to go up. Don't do that. We gotta see this up here, and then I'm gonna go in for a few minutes. Did you have to have it so big, Fred? Well, we'll try. Hang on a sec here. Okay, we'll try one more time. Okay, and then I'm going okay, to. Okay, we'll... Let's come back out when we're done. Okay, dear, I'm just. Hey! Can you roll back a little bit? Let's go. Now look! Oh, sorry. You just stepped out of the back of my snow Aww. kitten. Aww. Roll back a little bit. Aww! You killed it! Let's do You're not so coming to my place. <laughs> find Wheelie's broken, crumpled body on the way to the bathroom. We just had to go. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh oh. I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna wait till you get uh, okay. it on. I'll come back. I don't think I'm not. I, you know what? I have an awful time focusing on this. I'm not getting. It's, I guess it's too dark now. I'm not getting it, Fred. I can't get it focusing, dear. Okay, well, let's do the head too. I cannot get it to focus. I lost focus. I'm cleaning it up. Yeah. No. That's uh, the body part. Make it level here for the head. Okay, I'm going to turn it off so we get the uh, head on. Oh, that's a good head. Oh. Okay, I'll hold it. Okay, that's a head. Uh,
Oh, sorry, dear. Get over there. Okay. The red uh, lights on. Is it? Okay. So I'm just going to record the back. So how you going to get the voice off it? So oh. Put it in on a cassette? Yeah. I'll just play it back or grab it on tape. So when I talked with Darcy and Tara, all I did was ask them a couple questions. And you guys tell me whatever you want, and all I'll do is I'll just use it for material for the, uh, the speech. But I've heard a lot from Sue, how you guys met, but I haven't heard it from your side, Bob. So tell me what it was well, like... You, you never read the poem? I never read the poem. <laughs> I heard about the poem, and would only use it if you let us. But, but tell, me, tell, tell me from your perspective what it was like that first night. Well, it was a little strange in that uh, I was not expecting to even go there. Because mm -hmm. right up until five minutes before I left, I wasn't going to this party. And they convinced me, because it was Saturday night, I, had, I wasn't going out anywhere, I was just going to stay home. And they said, well, why don't you come in? My, my mom and, and Jerry said, well, why don't you come in, drive us in, and then you can drive back out and you can have the car for the evening. And then that way we don't have to drive, we can get a ride out with somebody else that's coming back. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, that's fine. So we finally got there. Then they said, well, why don't you come in for one drink and wish Bud a uh, uh, happy birthday and, and happy holidays and all this stuff. I said, okay, sure. I used to be their bartender when I was really young. Oh, you used to work for when you work well, No, I never worked for them. They, my mom used to have parties in our basement. Okay. And uh, being the inquisitive type, I used to sit behind the bar and then I just started pouring drinks. Okay. So I became the resident bartender whenever my mom had a party. Okay. I always sat behind the bar because in our basement we had one of those padded bars. And so I got to know a lot of the people mm -hmm. and they got to know me. So that's how I had met Barb and uh, Bud. So I went in, said hi, and I was just sitting there with a couple of people that, that I knew from my mother's friends. And then Susan walked in and it was... Uh, I wouldn't say electrifying. I would say it's definitely <laughs> interesting. There's no, there's yeah. no major sparks flying, but it was uh, definite interest coming. You, so you saw her coming with mom. I saw her coming. Actually, no, her parents weren't with her. They had stayed upstairs and were talking to uh, Bud and Bart. And Susan came downstairs. Yeah. And came in. She had a drink in her hand. I think it was just pop at the time, though. Yeah. And so that's. I looked up and I saw her. First thing I noticed was the legs. Second was the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and this was the only person around your age. In the group? Uh, well, actually, if there had been anybody else, I probably wouldn't have noticed them. Hmm. So then, then the first time you saw Susan, then you must have saw her a few more times during the evening as time went on. Well, I didn't have too much of a choice. It's a small basement, <laughs> and my friends who knew her friends uh, started talking with your mom. Right. <clears throat> and it ended up where my seat was taken. I was forcefully removed from it moved over to the other side of the room, and Susan was steered to the seat beside me. But you, Hello, uh, Bob. Hello. Hi, hi, Dad. Just asking a few questions here for the... Is the mall vehicle still on the go? Still on the go, yeah. Oh, my God, Susan. You timed that one perfectly. <laughs> yeah. When they told you they were going for an hour, that was your first clue, was it? <laughs> so you, you must have noticed the ring, though, before you had a chance to sit yes. down next to Susan. And I, I mentioned that in the, uh, the poem. But, how, but this came back to Susan's side, so you, were you talking with people Actually, about the ring? Actually, yes, someone asked me, well, how do you like her? And I said, very pretty, very nice, but she's wearing a ring. Mm. I said, she's taken, so I'm, I mean, I'll say hello, and, and then I'll be on my way. I, I don't know much about this, but it was on the proper <coughs> finger? It was on proper... the left hand, third finger, left hand. It was right. this one here, I think. It was, no, I think it was your grad ring. My grad ring, yeah. It was your grad ring. And it looked like a, a diamond, it was a single stone in, in the end of a ring, or looked from across the room. Mm. So I said, she's taken. So all of a sudden, the rumor mill started going around from where I was sitting on one couch. Susan was sitting like like an L shape at the other end of the L. Yes. And the word just kept going right around the room. <laughs> it got to her. Well, actually, it never made it to Susan. It made it to your mother. Right. Okay. And then your mother stopped it right there, turned around, and it came back to me that it's not a wedding ring. I look over about 10 minutes later, and the ring is taken off that finger. <laughs> and moved to, they moved to the other hand. Mom said, take the ring off. So what were you thinking when you saw the ring disappear? Um, well, I, I, I can't say because I wasn't really looking for a relationship because I was just home on leave from, from right. Egypt. Right. So I was thinking, well, I'll go over and talk to her. Right. Of course, I don't have much of a chance. All the people here are making me go over to talk to her. <laughs> but it wasn't, it wasn't that hard. Mm -hmm. I didn't take a, too much convincing. So we went over and we sat down and I said about three words and Susan talked for about an hour and a half. <laughs> and... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's what I told you. I told him the whole life story. 
Oh yeah, you get that, it all. That's kind of nice. So I just sit back, relax. And yeah. Just not and he was just like, they they served us. We didn't have to move. They came over and they served us drink drinks and, and served us some candies and or chocolates and stuff like that. Yeah. Little snacks. So we sat there and it was about eleven thirty, I guess it was. I hadn't noticed the time go by, and um, I said, "Would you mind if I called you sometime, or would you mind if we went out sometime?" And she goes, "Oh well." No, that's not a problem. I said, well, how about right now? And she goes, oh, right now? Well, it's 11.30. It's kind of late. And I said, well, yeah, okay, that's fine. I'll give you a call and make it eight some other time. So I got her phone number. And then she looked at her mom. And I think something happened there because the next thing I know, she turned around. She goes, well, tonight's not too bad. Let's go out. So we went to Sh Sherlock's. Yeah. What happened there, Sue? I just told mom I was going to ask me. And we were going <laughs> to talk about dancing. And I said, uh, I think he... He asked me to go dancing, and I said, well, I said, do you mind if I leave with him? I mean, because, you know, I can come with him. And he goes, oh, sure, go have a good time, go have a good time, get somebody drivers home and all that, so. I thought it was kind of like Disney driver, too. Right. So, I don't know how Dad and Mom ended up getting home, but <laughs> I went dancing. So you went dancing, too, at uh, Sherlock's. Sherlock's? As a local pub or bar dance it, hall? It was a, a local bar. It was the hot bar. Oh. Okay. And then after Sherlock, you talked for a while afterwards? Uh, well, we, it, was, it was quite funny because I met um, my father's best friend's daughter. We grew up together. Okay. And she's about the same age as I am. Very pretty girl. Yeah. And I just happened, with Susan, I happened to be sitting in the, the bar, and this girl walked by, and I hadn't seen her for like four or five years. And all of a sudden, it's just like jump up, hug, and all this, and Susan's sitting there going, Hmm. <laughs> and I, I apologized, but I yeah. also explained. I it it to really didn't bother me because I mean, I just met this guy, and if right. he, you know, if he knows women, that's okay, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't like, okay, you can only talk to me. Yeah. Right. Like I wasn't that insecure. I was like, you, you, I'm sure you know people here. You did grow up here, and you know. Well, then we went for coffee, Tim Hortons. And I heard this was quite, quite, quite late in the morning. Well, let's just say your mother was a tad upset. <laughs> Four thirty was it? I heard. Oh, we sat there and chit chatted till four thirty. Drank lots of coffee, ate a couple donuts, and I dropped Susan off, and then I made a date for the next night. Oh, and we went out. Well, not the next night, the next week, because the next night she was going to a party at the Hilton. Yeah, with Karen. With Karen Shark. Oh yes, yes. And so it was two days later, um, two days after your party at the Hilton. It was Tuesday. Yeah, the party was Sunday, that's right. So it was Tuesday. We went out again and we went parking. Susan look any different the, the second time? Like, did you notice anything different? No, she's still great. I think she was glowing around this time, I remember. Yeah. When, I, when she came home, she had this glow about her. So this was the second time you guys went out? And we went parking down at the bay. <laughs> and we talked. Mm -hmm. And we talked for quite a while longer. Wow. But then, just, then Susan got mad because I didn't try to kiss her. Well, was this coming back? That is this like in the car or was it coming back to the house? This was in the car. I gave her a good night kiss. Oh, okay. But uh, well, we were sitting parking. Right. I mean, we watching the submarine races sort of thing. This was, Oh, this is on the top of the hill? Like no, actually, up? we went down to a place called McLaren's Beach. Oh, okay. And it's on the west side. It's right, the, the road drives, or there's a little parking lot right on the beach. Okay. So you're looking out over the over the harbor. He is a perfect gentleman. We just talk, 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 talk. And I just kept saying, well, when is he going to kiss me? When is he going to kiss me? <laughs> no, 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 never kiss me. Talk, talk, talk. I kept thinking, what's wrong with this guy? Is he gay? Talk, 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 talk. <laughs> I didn't think he was gay. I just thought, you know, he was just couldn't figure it out. I was confused. But anyway. So you guys only had a little bit of time, but like that first Christmas. Two weeks. So that was the second time you guys got together. That was the second time, yeah. And the third time was, was skiing. Oh, you went skiing. Oh, that's I funny. took her for basically her first time skiing up the Pole Mountain. Was this the time that you fell off the ski lift? No. Oh, okay. That was the, my actual, my, the pseudo first time skiing oh, because okay. I came down the hill and I went back up again. So I don't consider that skiing. But this is the first time I actually skied down the hill. And, and she was doing blues skiing. before the end of the day. Wow. She went from not skiing to getting, finally making it to the chairlift. <laughs> now we're going to get down a small bunny hill to the chairlift. So well, actually, no, that's, that hill has a big sign on the top of it now, says uh, this hill is not for beginners. I'm no kidding. I fell down at least oh, 20 times. At oh, least. gosh, sir. I mean, that's an underestimation. Yeah, it was never more than 10, 15 feet away from her. Yeah, and you're so patient, you just stood there and held it up an eye. But that time, I, I had snow in my goggles and my ears <laughs> oh, and my hat. And 
I was sore. I mean, because every time you fall, it's kaboom, kaboom, kaboom on your butt. Oh, no. and my my thighs were outside. My thighs were just black. Oh god. She never said a word. Oh, never complained. God. I said, I'm not gonna give in. I'm not <laughs> gonna be a wimp. He's gonna think that I have guts here. <laughs> I'm not gonna let this man think that I'm weak. So I finally get the chair lift, and I'm just like, and they had to stop the lift because it went too far out god. on the little run to pick up, to pick us up. Yeah. And I had to shut the lift down for me in. Oh and I ski back, and finally I get on the ski. Left down yeah. sore, I'm sore. And then I she thought, enjoyed the ride up, put it that way. Then I knew I had to come <coughs> down, and I thought, oh God. <laughs> but actually, coming down on the green run, she didn't have a problem. Oh, that's Not great. a problem. That's was great. it that time or the next time we went skiing that the ski patrol had to ski up the hill to get my ski back on? That's the second oh, time. <laughs> because it was icy. Yeah, and I got stuck in the middle of the hill, and my ski came off. And since I was on a slant, snow had gotten under my ski boot, so I couldn't get the ski, oh, my ski right. boot clean to get my ski back on. Right. So the ski patrol skied up sideways and I got oh my god they're coming to get me oh my god I'm standing in the middle and I can't move I can't go down I can't go up and they they, they cleaned my boot off and got the ski on and I was fine oh my gosh but sometimes you get well at some point you had to go back to Egypt yes so you only have a few weeks or a few days we had, we had two weeks total so we went up we went out five times on dates and spent time here for uh, one or two nights I was here and two nights or so you we were up in the Mm -hmm. So what were you thinking of this guy by the end of the two weeks? I was pretty smitten. You were glowing, I recall. I, I did. It was so nice because the person I had been with before was so different, so <laughs> negative, so <laughs> yucky, and such a waste of time. And the, and I always I thought, well, I must be a bum magnet, you know, like I'll never oh, be God. a nice guy. <laughs> and then there was Barry. He was just a nice fella, but he wasn't like I didn't. Very, very quite no, contrary. He was no spark there. He was a really nice guy, more a friend. Yeah. And, uh, and that would have been about two or three months, and then I had Bob. I didn't quite know who, if I was ever going to be anybody special, and I thought he was special. What did you, or were you thinking of now by the end of the two weeks? You're headed back to Egypt? I was very impressed. Um, I didn't think we'd ever see each other again, or other than the fact that the next time I came to visit, I'd definitely be making a phone call. Mm -hmm. But I really, uh, I, didn't, I didn't know if it would go any further than it did. Mm. And then I finally got back from Egypt, and called Susan and she said, okay, well, when would you like me to come up and visit? Well, that was a big thing, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. It shocked me. So wow. I arrived out uh, two days after he arrived home from Egypt. I was, uh, I was in Edmonton, picked up in Edmonton and took me to the Fantasy Inn Hotel, which is called Galaxy Land now, yes. and had gotten a corner suite. Right, I need your help, okay? Yes. And there was a jacuzzi in there, a four-person jacuzzi. And oh, actually, hang on a sec. Okay. So you had to go, you... We came back, Susan, you called Sue, well, and then... we missed the whole point. We had been corresponding back and forth extensively. Oh, yeah, we had been... Oh, okay. he was in Egypt. Stuff. Right, with letters and that. And you got, you got this, um, this, 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 uh, for Egyptian... Papyrus. Papyrus. Framed for my birthday, 20, on 28th of December. Right. I'd only known it like a week and a half. Just before I left. Old. Oh, that's right. And then he sent me a cartouche, which is a necklace and a puzzle ring. Right. From Egypt. Right. I cool. sent him... She could have killed me about the puzzle ring, because it, when it came, it separated, and she couldn't oh. get it back together again. Oofed it. Who saw it? Tell Oofed. me about this. The, the ring came. It was no ring came in one piece. I, I I tried it on. It fit me, and Mom said, "Let me see it," and she didn't catch on that it would fall apart. And then all of a sudden, she dropped it in her lap, and it was in four rings. And I went, it "No, like right, no." <laughs> <laughs> and we, Mom and I, had hours trying to get this. And finally, we thought Ruth Sonia would know how to do this. Took Ruth a half an hour. Wow! Like Ruth just has a mechanical mind. Right. And I was amazed. I watched Ruth fuss with it but for a half an hour. She had it back together. Then I had it soldered. Wow. Derek does have your engagement ring sized. Right. And I they took the extra gold out of her engagement ring and soldered mine into one ring. Oh, uh, okay. So that would never happen again. <laughs> <laughs> Mom helped out there, huh? Yeah. So after um, after get the birthday present, then you guys corresponded. And then he left me correspondent for the next two months while he was in Egypt, and uh, then <coughs> we still kind of attracted each other and stuff, but we weren't exclusive or anything. Oh. You know, we didn't say like you're mine and yours, nobody else. You know, right. we just said just kept kind of like a, his relationship going, and uh, we got to know each other yes. more through letters. And you yeah. tend to be more truthful through letters. It's easy to say things through letters, and yes. but it wasn't really much different than when we had talked. So it was like I knew I felt discovered all the wonderful things about him that I never knew. Yeah. And I said, to, uh, I, to, I told him, I decided when I first met him that I was just going to be with myself and if he didn't like me, I'll come. 
What the... Was there anything that was particularly funny that happened between you guys? Like, I've heard a lot of funny things now, but anything you wanted to highlight? Like, anything that... A practical joke or just some funny situation where you guys laughed and laughed and laughed? Or... I sent him red satin underwear for Valentine's Day. You did? <laughs> and I opened it in the mess. <laughs> oh, you he did? That was a letter and he couldn't figure out what this was, so he took the letter out, he took a thread underwear, looked thread underwear, everybody looked at it, he put it back in. Close it up. Only one person saw it. Oh my god. But, it, but they were a pair of new underwear. I mean, yes. I bought them just to send them. Yes. For, for Valentine's Day. She didn't even perfume them. No, I didn't. But they still had the tag on them, so they were new. Like, I didn't get gross about this, okay? So, they're brand new. And I wanted them to know that. Like, yes. I didn't, you know, wear them for three weeks and gave them to them, you know. Hey, they were Lucenza. They're Lucenzas. Yeah. She still has them. She still wears them. Yeah, so I rolled them up into this envelope with the, with the with this um, Valentine's Day card, and he whips it out in the mess. And... <laughs> so, anyway, he, at that point, he kind of wondered, hmm, she's got balls. <laughs> well, you know, not quite in that term. Well, you know what I mean. Like, this, she's kind of interesting. She's, yeah. This is kind of a risque thing to do, you know? Spunky. Yeah. Spunky. How, how about yourself, Bob? Anything funny? Anything else that comes to mind? Or? I can't think of anything right off the bat, no. If, uh, if, if you guys had any advice for other couples, like so imagine this is a wedding, there's people in, you know, in the audience, and some of them may be getting engaged in that themselves. Do you have any <laughs> advice for them? Anything you'd like to say based on what you've found out or done? Trust your heart, but don't forget your head. How much you, Sue? I'd have to say that um, be yourself and uh, and uh, don't settle for anything less than what you expect from somebody. Mm. Like don't don't settle. If, if the main things are not in the person that you see, they're not going to be. Then the person will not change for you. Mm. And I learned that the hard way. Mm. And um, when you find somebody. You don't have to talk about it because they're there. Mm. Like he fit everything that I, my heart had not even, even if I unconsciously didn't know it, my heart, he completed me. Right. Like they said on Jerry Maguire, he, right. he completed me. Right. So. so. Tell me about when you proposed to her. You must have thought about this a lot. Well, it took me six months to buy the ring. <clears throat> six months? Six months I searched. Um, every jewelry store, anything. Or any place that sells diamonds in the city of Edmonton, I, I've been in it. Wow! I was quite meticulous in choosing out the uh, the stone, the wow. ring itself, and we both knew exactly what the ring was going to be—just a plain solitaire Tiffany style, they call it. Mm -hmm. But the stone itself that went in it, I took a long time to find it, and it was—it's uh, a very special stone. It's an unusual type of diamond. It's yes, it's a Russian, what they call a Russian cut diamond. A Russian cut diamond. And it's very high quality. It's not the biggest size, <coughs> but it's probably one of the one of the better qualities. It's because the diamond is has no um, carbon. carbon in it. It's it's almost well it's not flawless, but it is what they call very slight inclusion, which would mm -hmm. be a VSI it's called. Okay. And um, they're the only way to see the little bit of what they call inclusion, which is the carbon, mm -hmm. is with a ten times microscope. Mm. And yeah, jewelers, much. jewelers use a, I think it's a, I think it's a four times eyepiece, right. which magnifies four times. Right. And they can't Hi. see anything in that ring. Oh wow, that's pretty good. <coughs> so I was, I was very, very particular. Very We're having our session. Well, you want to <laughs> no, no, it's just it's not like you heard it all. No, it's okay, Dennis. So when I proposed, Susan was, uh, she was pretty down. She was uh, in the middle of exams, and she wasn't feeling very well, and she was lonely, and she was. Missing home and mummy and. I went upstairs. So uh, I had already planned to. I had planned to do this at a different time. I was going to take her out to dinner and do it there, but I decided she was feeling so down. I said, "Well, come on in your bedroom." And I put it in a little bag. And I put the card in. I put the ring on the bottom of the bag. So she opened up the card, and the card was a proposal. And I was on my knee at the time. Did you Did you expect this? Did you, did you know this was coming? I was I was down. I wasn't thinking anything for a kid's time. <laughs> it was in a little cat bag too, with a little cat in front of it. Yeah. And so, but did you have an idea? Like I knew he he was going to propose. Well, we discussed it. When. You discussed it. Yeah. yeah. So that, so then you knew it, but you didn't know when. Yes. I wouldn't let her. And then you came in the room and you saw the bag. What? Yeah, and I looked at him. <laughs> and then uh, I read the card, and then it. I don't know if I had the exact words, but I could actually email you the exact words of the proposal if you want. <laughs> I don't think if you like, I'd be curious. And uh, then I said to him, and I said, uh, 
wow. And then he goes, look in the bag. And I bought it, bring it. And I said, yes. Wow. She'd actually proposed to me three or four times prior to that. Are you serious? And I said no. So. Are you serious? Wow. It was it was half joking, but. Wow. She did. She did. Oh, she knew I was going to ask her. She was just she was you just doing it to bug me. For her. What's that? You were supposed to beg. I did. <laughs> I did for her to say yes to me. Wow. We're not interviewing you, mom. Huh? Well, she was just joking. Her proposals to me were, were her way of saying, hurry up and ask me. Oh. I want the ring. It was buddy. the hint. Yes. So we decided it wouldn't be until after I graduated. Right. So you were going through exams at that time. So you're getting pretty close. Yeah. Do you, uh, in terms of the, um, like the, the reception of that, you, what type of, up, do you want to upbeat? Do you want to jokingly? Do you want some serious part? Do you want some laughing, some crying? Like, well, we're both fairly. Uh, what would you like to have? We're both fairly loose people, so. Okay. I think just sincerity. Sincerity. I think what's funny will be funny anyway. Is, it, is there anything you want me to do, or anything else? I'm pretty flexible. Do? <laughs> no. <laughs> you do tricks. <laughs> I don't. Do. Will you juggle for us? <laughs> well, I have my juggling ball for Christmas, so I could. Well, I think that's that's great. I'm, I think it's a great story. I think it's wonderful. I mean, I, I can I can tell you, uh, Bob, from uh, from our perspective, when Susan went out, she came back. She was so down. And she came back, and I swear there was this glow around her. There was just something totally different. She literally glowed, glowed, and the whole and she was saying, you know, old Fred, we'll spend Christmas together. And I said, no, I said, go, go. Go well, I know. I, I, I actually felt bad about that a couple. Oh, times. you didn't have to, because I was so happy to see you go out and have fun. To me, that was most important. We went out and played pool one night. Oh yeah. At the Hilton, and she met my friend Colleen, mm -hmm. which is the one that's going to, might be uh, videotaping. Saw her last night, and she's all happy. She was just waiting for us to get engaged. <laughs> and he knows her from when they were kids. Oh yeah, yeah. But also, um, there's one important part. I think you might have whizzed by, <clears throat> Jonathan. Oh, yes. yes. So when I first went up to visit him, Bob hadn't seen Jonathan in six months because he'd been in Egypt. Right. In a way, St. John Brick. And he never went home because he didn't have Jonathan for that Christmas. So meeting, meeting yes. Jonathan for the first time and trying to find my role within that relationship was, was interesting. Oh, it was hard for her. Oh, gosh. Like, I mean, I'd never been a parent. I'd never even thought of being a parent at that age. I never, I mean, that, uh, hello, here's this five year old looking at you. <laughs> it's like, and my role. I mean, so it, he developed my role for me. I let him, I decided to give him the lead, like I was going to be a responsible adult, like I would do it with any other mm -hmm. child, mm -hmm. respect dad's wishes, and if mm -hmm. I didn't believe in what dad was doing as, as a friend, I would uh, tell him aside, say, look, maybe you're being too hard, or, or you know, how about this? And, you know, but I mean, dad, 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 dad was dad, and I was dad's girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now, he, he labeled me differently, and now I'm, I'm two things, I'm his stepmom and his friend. Well, nice. So it went to that, and I let him label me as I went along. But uh, I got, it took me a couple of years to get, because I didn't have him all the time. Yeah. He's a really smart kid, too. Like, oh. He's a good skier. He's, he's quick. Everybody. I know, he's quick. <laughs> and I just love him so to death. And my only regret is that he wasn't mine. Oh. Because I love him to death, and, and as much as it will hurt Bob more to see him go, not see him till May. But you know it, is, it hurts me too, but I don't. But it, I can never match a parent. Yeah. But I, I do hurt enough as if he was, because yeah. as much as I could hurt, you know, yeah. like I've never had a child, so but I'll miss him as much as I can miss anybody. Wow. So, but Jonathan's a, a significant part of the reunion. The union. I knew that I wasn't marrying Bob. I knew I was marrying Bob and Jonathan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I knew this. I knew Married a family. Mm -hmm. I knew I was marrying into a family. Right. <laughs> so and. Probably the hardest part of that is it's not a full-time family, it's only a part-time family. Mm -hmm. But we adjusted, I mean, we adjusted and um, I know his favorite meal and I'm, I make it, even corn <laughs> bake. He's happy, we gave the recipe to Granny Barbie, gave the recipe to his mom, Paula, and Paula has been nothing but respectful towards me on the phone and in That's person, good. and which makes it much easier for Jonathan. Um, no matter, look, you know, we have our own views of things, yeah. but we never speak ill of his mom in yeah. front of... Yeah. Yeah, and I have a feeling Paula doesn't speak ill of, of Bob either because Jonathan doesn't come off that way. Yeah. Like, it's full respect for Daddy as well. Yeah. So it's it's a plot. It's the best of that situation. 
And you have a good way with kids, so mm -hmm. you, yes. you have a good way. Yeah, I mean, I love him to pieces. I really do. And I mean, I'm not, I, I, had no, I never had him since he was born. Like I, like, I was holding that little baby. I'm, I'm, I'm like, pretend my new niece, actually. Oh, yes, yes. They, and I looked at him. I looked at his baby, and I've been thinking real bit, you know, quit smoking to have a baby and everything. And I looked at it, and I said, we've got to have one. I mean, it just, because I'm not completed until I have a child. Mm -hmm. Like, Jonathan fills many, many slots, but... I don't know what it's like to have a baby, carry one, to go through the first five years. I think it's, uh, I think it was an amazing thing to give up smoking as well for that. That's we both did. a big thing, really. I mean, I've got enough Susan problems. Susan said that you, you went cold turkey? Mm hmm That was pretty big. Well, we, I had no choice. Except for the Christmas cigar. I had no <laughs> choice because I, I'm on enough medication and I have to go off that first too. So why try to get off cigarettes and medication at the same time? I go to my blink of mind. Yeah. So let's look at a year or so in advance, quit the smoking, get yeah. that under the belt, and then the medication, we just do one thing. Well, she, that, she was kind of pushed into it too, a little bit. I needed it though, I needed a little push. Like he said, now you have to smoke in the basement or outside. Yeah. And that was, I respectfully, like he said, you know, I didn't say you have to, but you know, it what really would help me if you yeah. did that. Yeah. So I had my last smoke the evening, he'd quit, the day he quit. And I looked back downstairs and I was smoking by the washer and I'm thinking, you know, I just don't see myself doing this very long down here. And I thought, well, you know, I got the patch. I've had it for almost a year in the house. And I thought, well, why not? I'm ending my job. I know I'm going for a <clears throat> home for a month where mm -hmm. nobody smokes. Mm -hmm. Why not try it now? And I just took it day by day with the patch. Like, mm -hmm. few bad days. Um, oh, God. I kept hitting the patch <laughs> trying to get more nicotine out of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Like, they say, you know, more used to be patched, the more nicotine you get, so I was just like, God, can I more nicotine? You'd be sitting, we'd be sitting watching TV and it'd be all nice and quiet, except for what's on the TV, and all of a sudden you get, come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> time we found, oh my God. You, you met the family a little more, so this family. Do you think you're going to feel comfortable with this? I, feel com I felt completely comfortable when I first met well, you. I'm so glad, because yeah. you know what? I, I have uh, first impressions for me, I have them done in Fred. I get gut yeah. feeling with people. And I have a very good one with you. Buns of steel. Oh, Don't forget that. Oh, well, that was <laughs> well, my God, that was our joke that night. We had to make a joke because it was a sad Christmas in some ways. Well, you said you had a nickname for all your men. Yeah, well, Buns of steel was a good <laughs> All my men? Yes. We saw a good set of buns the other night, didn't we? Jerry Maguire. Oh, Tom Cruise. Oh, no, okay, a black in. guy. <laughs> oh, okay. Bald black guy. <laughs> a fabulous physique. <laughs> Show me the money. Cuba Goodwing, yes. yes. Oh, anyway, <laughs> we're talking about the wedding, right? <laughs> so May the second. So that's going to be pretty big. So you guys are having it in St. John, like I have to. I have in, to out in uh, Chris Manchester, Ross area. So where the where will the reception be held? Like where? RQYC. Oh, so it'll be in there. Right here. So we'll have. Oh, it's upstairs in the. Um, in the no. sort of the party room? No, it's downstairs. downstairs in the main lot, in the main so bar there, area. Will there be like a like a podium or a speaker? There or? will be a table. Okay. And then okay. that will be taken back after the speeches. Be able to go in there and we'll have the cutting of the cake first. So Patty Livingston will finish off her photography. No, We're right. going to take her pictures in the afternoon, mm -hmm. not after the wedding. Right. So I think that'll be good for me to get more relaxed. So that I won't be in the the, the headspace I was in at Tara's. <laughs> I have just a slight <laughs> wedding phobia. Oh my God, we have that one on film too. Oh. <laughs> Did you yeah. see that? Oh yeah. Oh, her shaking. I haven't off. seen the film, but she told me. Oh, about it was it. horrible. I was gonna pass out. I, oh, I didn't know what the feeling felt like, but I knew. All of a sudden, with perfect clarity, I realized this is how you feel when you pass out. And I was thinking, I'm gonna pass out, and I nothing I could do. It went from my legs, it was moving up my body, and I just Did felt. Did you get this. gray on the side of your eyes? Yeah, oh, I got gray. The whole whoosh was coming right up. It's called and, gray out. And all, I, all I could see was Oliver's hair. The way it was kind of like a little <laughs> hedgehog look. A little straight over. So I focused on his hair and everything kind of receded. <laughs> well, I was fine when the minister started crying, when Frost started <coughs> oh, crying. Gosh, well, yes. then I thought, well, heck, you know, I can't talk that. Let's relax, right? <laughs> <laughs> but my own wedding, we have chairs. The priest asks, would you like to have chairs? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, for 29 minutes, I don't know what for. And it'll be exactly 29 minutes, the ceremony he said. Oh, wow. Apparently, the Christmas mass lasts about 17 minutes. Bob said they, they kneel down to take their Brady as bracelet. He said he knelt down and then the mats over one knee, like, one knee, and I had to stand up. <laughs> so quick, I don't ask. He didn't have a chance to even make his. <laughs> so he, this guy just says, "Let's go." <laughs> so. And you're having to dance as well. 
Yeah, the, when we go to the RSQIC, it'll be about 7.30. Oh, get a DJ, and then we'll have the speeches and whatever, MC first, and yeah. head table will be there, which is just the four of us. And uh, not parents, but it'll be like you and my, it'll be with Bob, myself, Tara, and Tony. Right. And uh, then everybody will kind of gathered around. We'll, they'll have gotten wine. We'll have people working to get everybody a glass of wine for toast. And you say your thing, and Mom wants to say a few words, right. and Dad will say a few words, and then if anybody in his side of the family wants the same thing, um, right. they'll, they'll, they'll go to Bob and to tell you, because you're the MC, okay. if anybody wants the same thing. And uh, then it's kind of like everybody have a really good time, and then we'll serve after, we'll have like cold hors d'oeuvres, like it'll be finger foods, and have somebody working at a table where we have like a cheese tray and that. And then what's going to happen is, um, um, say around 10, um, coffee and tea will be put on, and what we'll do is walk around with the rice cake, it'll be all cut up, bit one cut, cut up, and then we'll take Tara did. We'll go around everybody, and that way we can spend the next hour or so seeing everybody. And and then it's just going to be, we don't know where we're going to go for a honeymoon. We're getting Hilton checked out with that friend who works there to see if they get a deal. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. Mom's going to take me to In the Clove. Oh, to check it out. So just so I can see the <coughs> bridal suite, so I can let you know. What? what we probably could do is videotape the bridal suite, and I can take it back, and you can see what it looks like. Mm -hmm. So just to give it options. Mm -hmm. And so then we're not going to have a honeymoon. Well, you probably heard what we're thinking about in our family, Bob. I have a For the year 1999, yeah. 2000. Somewhere around <coughs> there. Because like if you plan a year ahead, you can get Actually, that was my idea. Oh, was it? Oh, my God. <laughs> get Tara and Darcy, yourself and Sue, and if you have a little one with we'll, you. We will have Jonathan yeah. that year. And Jonathan? Yeah. Oh, great. And probably a little one. And, a little, and even a littler one. Yeah. And, uh, Christmas 99? Maybe. Christmas 99, it's two years from now. Mm -hmm. Look, look your boyfriend. <laughs> fiance. I lost my fiance. So, I sent the dango, got your baby. <laughs> fiance, so like Pepe Le Pew from. Yeah. Uh, I Lupus. lost my fiance. <laughs> oh, my fun. I look forward to this. I I want to get home and see the rest of the family and to come home and be part of your. What well, you should do over the next little bit is talk to Bud Lawler, and Bud Bill Lawler? Lady, Bill Lady, and Pat Landers. I'll give you good stories about her. And driving they, them around. Yeah, the dr stories of me being there. I was a designated chauffeur as a He was a designated <coughs> bartender. Yeah? So. And you you would drive them around? Just dad was going out? Oh, yeah. I thought a bunch of yahoos. one point, I had one guy in the front seat with me, three in the back. Billy Burns, Billy Leahy, and Bud Lawler. And dad was stretched out across their laps in the back. I had taken them from a Christmas party. <laughs> and dad's trying to tell me how to drive. And I just slowed down and looked at him and said, do you want to get home? <laughs> kind of thing. And that's enough. That's enough. I'm dropping you all off right here. So the, you know, this, this young woman in, in the car with these uh, yeah. four tanked up... Uh, and I thought at one point, it actually, my job stopped when I went out west, but I was going to get myself one of those little caps and the black gloves and the black suit. <laughs> and I just drive them places, you know, and just be that... So did you pick them up or did you... Like, Dad and I would leave and then they would just kind of gravitate towards me because I was the designated driver and I drove people everywhere. And this is this is at parties or Oh Christmas parties. Christmas parties, and, yeah. Oh. So would you go with that or would you I'd go with that. I wouldn't drink. But you stay there for the time? I'd stay there the whole night with them and I wow. would just drive them around. Wow. Bunch of Yahoos. But aren't they I girl with some of them this morning. God Dad says, you know, Curly's such are a good just a bunch of Yahoos. Oh I know, like kids. Kids, they're kids. Dad one time we went to the well, Larry's dad was hammered. Hammered, and I gave him a 20 minute warning, he was going home. The 20 minutes. And there's one girl there, she was warped out of it, and there was somehow some, these two chains hanging from the ceiling where a sign had been. And she was dancing with these chains. Dad said, I'm going to go up there and dance with her. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I was like, That's it. That's it. Oh my Doesn't God. sound like a topic for us. No, and I said, That's no, it. Funny I said, That's it, Dad. I had to almost grab him. You are not <laughs> going to dance the chains. We're leaving now. <coughs> oh now. my goodness. Oh, anyway, yes. <laughs> <laughs> she loves it. There's Elmo. Oh my gosh. Oh, I had a good time. So that's, so basically if you want to get any, any juice. Alright, I'll talk with them. Say and as far as, as far as childhood juice, call mom, because mom has no loyalties to anybody. Well, mom I, I, I prefer to just stick, start from like when it, when it started. Oh, Tara.
Yeah. So I went. I was at a sewing course, and one of the women there actually had gone to Europe and France and taken a one year's course. And as part of the projects we did with the course, she showed how to actually sell wine. And part of the selling, this was her presentation to the class, was how you taste it, how you drink it. I never knew this, right? So after you, after you figured out. <laughs> <laughs> That's having a moment. Okay, so this is. Put my this eye is behind you, Dad. No, my eyes are sore. So, do we need a light model? <laughs> well, this doctor's would do. And, and Put the okay. light on. We haven't really done makeup yet. <laughs> okay. So, Jeez, yeah. this is. Um, Where are we going to take a picture? This is the proper. <laughs> I'll show you there. That's better, Mom. This is the proper. This is apparently the proper way to, dr to drink wine. You have to hold it by the, the stem, because if you hold it like this, or like you this, heat your, your heat warms it up. So you have to hold it like this. And then what you do is you, you look at it. in the glass. And you look at it, you hold it up, and you look at its body. So you see, you see how the, the body of the glass? Well, the, the body of the wine. And then you. Or you, the body of the person <laughs> next to you if she's really good looking. Uh -huh. yeah. and, like then, that body. and then this is the interesting part. Like when you smell the wine, like we're thinking. That's right, that's that smelling it, right? <laughs> the way to smell the wine is to put your nose right into it. <laughs> Like that. Like this is how you're supposed to do it, right? Because you have to smell the wine. So you think yeah, it's you can wonder it. why people would just want to do this as opposed to sticking their whole schnoz yeah. right in the glass. Because <laughs> you get too much yeah. in the glass. Yeah. And it's, oh, so. nice, nice to meet you tonight, Roger. Just a second, I'm going to taste some of my wine. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good wine, right? Would you like it? How, so, uh, how, how is it the proper way to remove the nostril hairs from the wine? I don't know. <laughs> just don't, but, don't exhale. But you wouldn't have much wine in the glass, so you get oh, your nose just wet. But it's a very important well, obviously, look at the bottle. to look at the, the color of it, to smell it, and now here's how you it taste it. You with it. Here, here, here's, here's how you taste it. You don't just, ah, that was great wine. Yeah, That's spit, not the way you do it. Do you have a spit canister no. here? No. What you do is you, 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 you take a sip, and then you put it all around your mouth. So now you, you're, you're getting all parts of your palate to taste the wine. And here's the key. You do not swallow. You open up your teeth a little bit. And you breathe in through your teeth, and it aerates the wine, and it gives it a whole other dimension of, of, of taste. Mm, I to remember and this. Try this with wine; it's amazing. Like I previously said, I'd drink wine and swallow, but you swish around your mouth and go, and you just get this incredible taste, and then you can swallow. Now you're not done yet because what you then figure. Fred, is this really going to help me when I drink a big of wonder wine? Is it really going to baby duck or something? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> even the baby duck is. Mm. Make the, the baby duck for five bucks. The, so the, the last some bit, Zinfandel rose. The, 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 the last bit you do. Oh, going. The last bit you do is that you have to see how long the taste stays in your mouth. That's like, you know, the after. The more you the drink, taste. the longer it stays, isn't it? Okay, so. You only have to take a little bit of it. But I had an easier time trying to remember how to play curling. <laughs> That's mine, remember, I have my nostrils in it. Okay, so... And the proper way is to play a little song on the top of the glass. <laughs> you have to play the Inniskellen theme song. I want the long glass because I get my tongue right down here. Inniskellen, an expensive wine, oh, a small mother. bottle. Oh, mother. God, it, the, the thing is assaulted. All right. Okay, so we're going to take a glass. Okay, I'm going to turn it off in a minute. You got to take a glass. I, want, so I want to. Is this is a 22? I, I don't know what it is. Okay, Mom. And Tara, Holy you smokes. Go. Okay, you can smell it. Well, I don't like just, wine. Just put it down. Can I pass up. mine, Tara, so, for me, dear? First pass thing you do. I see a Christmas angel in it. Take the first thing you look at it, turn that off for a minute, dear, please, Mom. Really yes. Just turn it off. Can you turn yes. it off for a minute, dear? Well, don't get all excited, people. The heavy light is reducing the quality of the wine. Oh, you can leave it on. Okay, so look at it first. Okay, so then you. Oh. And then you go over and smell it. It's a nose thing. Okay, so try it, mom. I did it. <laughs> it's just like Nyquil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, if you put an ounce of this no, in your humidifier, now you, now you, you drink it. It's like syrup. Well, Terry, you're not supposed to pour it in your ear. I can feel it right back oh, in my ear. Yeah. That's like syrup. It's a very wow. thick wine, isn't it? It's a very, very, very thick wine. Right but it did give it a little more. Oh, of it's sweet though. It's more like it's more like a I juice. I gotta try that breathing in thing. Mm. It's like a syrup. It doesn't have it's any like, sharpness to it. You know what? It would, it's like a liqueur. Not dry, There's not a sense of dryness in that wine <laughs> at all. 
It's like a liqueur. You, and actually, you well, know, this is the this. first white wine I've ever tasted that you can actually taste the flavor of grapes. Yeah, yeah. You can. This is actually apple juice with fermented in the basement. It's great. It's wonderful, isn't it? Good, Fred. Well. Fred sample well. 77. Never mind that one. Can I ask you a question, Fred, and have it on tape? We can always pour it right in your eyeball. Could I, how much no. is that bottle? It's 81.75. In a skillin, I'd say probably about 12 bucks. Fred? Maybe 20. Hey, we got an 80. Do I, we got a 12. Do we don't want to know what that is. You don't want to know But I would like to know just for the tape there. I will tell you, Mom. It's more than your birthday present. It's a secret present. price. You don't, know what it, what was it? you don't want to know. Is it more than 50 bucks? Oh, oh yeah. Here's a clue. Fred will be spending the next few months at home. <laughs> 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 Fred will be doing That's some special work next for the members of Inniskillin. Next time he, he phones, we won't. This is... I mean, this is what we call the finer things in life. The Japanese buy a lot of this because it's... It's Canadian. excellent. Ontario like, makes some of the one best... One of the guys here that travels for uh, Corby, sir, he was down just so for my, Moncton. Just so that someday, dear... Scott, and they have a wine. You want to buy wine? And like he says, nothing's going to be with it. You know, like a 75, 100... I don't care, but I just want to know. Interested. Yeah. yeah. Fred? That's great. Yeah, it's like a liqueur. That's actually that was the nicest white nice. wine I've ever had. That's nice. It is incredibly. It's nice. like it's like that cheap, much probably cheaper version. A little nod there for the camera. <laughs> uh, the, the German wine, that, that awful down, yeah. whatever thing I was calling it, awful it's Kellerine. They serve it in a big thin bottle. Well. Like it's like a blue, a blue glass full, bottle, full mm -hmm. teeth, and it's very sweet like that, but not that sweet. That's excellent. Oh, shall we be eating, shouldn't no, we be no, eating no, something no, with this? Oh, you just, you eat no. Slice of bread or a cracker oh, or something. Right. In, in fact, in oh. fact you it's don't serve this. A little bit of caviar on a cracker. Ear. You don't serve this any dessert because the sweetness would overpower the dessert. Oh, that's wait, wait. Could you pour this over ice cream as a liqueur? <laughs> Could you stir it into a big pot of 15 gallon soup and add something? <laughs> you can make a really nice white wine sauce out of it. The, um, what I'm saying is that it's that's almost like a liqueur. It's very nice. It's good. I think I'll have. I'm not a sweet wine person. I like something that kind of kick back. To My it. problem oh, really? is how do I like a dry wine yeah. glass? <laughs> Maybe a one or two. two you know what? A really, uh, in an average range, white wine. Are there's, uh, what is that? There's an Australian white wine, Nottage Hill, and they make some of the best white wine, uh, dry white wine. Oh, man, that's mm. good. Mm. Oh, like more. Just a touch. Okay. Mm. Oh no, I mean, uh, I so that you guys can have some more. Like, uh, I'm not getting Scott on this camera very well because I got a light behind you, Scott, and I'm getting <laughs> a dark I shadow. Usually I don't fit in a whole frame anyway. I need a bigger camera. No, it's the lighting over there by in the background. Okay, uh, Fred? What's the alcohol content of this? 23. It's 10.5%. That's not bad. Could it's I have a little more, Fred? A bottle of wine. You sure. 11.2, Right here, dear. beautiful. Dark. It really is. I'm quite enjoying it. I have it. I have it right back in my ear. Fred, can you take? That's good, Daryl. Is it white wine or red wine that you can you uh, you can look at the legs of the wine? Oh. Is it red or just? This is the area where I'm not worried. I'm not. Are they? No, I think they don't wine the legs. Why yeah. Well, it's something where you be... let it go around the glass the and you see that. how quickly I mean, it falls down the sides. The residue falls down the sides. Anyway. Okay. All right. Away! Oh, well. Away yeah. with your file camera! Away oh, okay. With... Wait, now, switch I'll... for children. <laughs> Let me see now. <laughs> and well, I can't. How do you turn? You're on, Scott. Perform. On. Well, no, we're just getting everybody, but I can't. Let's see, Tara. No, let's see, dear. Well, that's a little bit better. We have oh. a deer lamp. Now it's in the camera now. That's it. It's, I've broken it. No, no. I know. I know. Okay. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think I need fire in this All right. <laughs> Can you, uh, let's see now. I want you idea. to... Sing the song to Le Miserable, Bring Me Home. Send me, what is it? Bring Him Home. Mom, this is I'm only teasing oh, okay. you, dear. I I'm did, teasing. I have, tape, I have a tape of me doing that. What? Yeah, I did that in, when I did a show. Uh, I don't have to put that on. When I did a show, what show was it that I did that one in? I did that one in All the World's a Song Cue, a show that I wrote myself in Halifax. You sang that song? That, uh, yeah, and I did that song with the, uh, there was a skit that I did with it, a famous skit about a farmer who notices that his sheep have learned or are trying to learn how to fly. And he notices, and it's just, he's very quaint and mm. commonplace, kind of sitting there going, well, you know, there are certain problems with 
Oh, avine aviation <laughs> you know you just <laughs> probably as the sheep are jumping out of trees and things like that trying to learn how to fly and then at the very end of the uh, of the skit it ends with a sheep learns how to fly and flies off is his favorite sheep named Harold flies off into the sunset and he goes well I guess the uh, I guess the I hope the something winds will bring him home and then I did God oh and see, look, I'm, I'm so hoarse. I did the song from Bring Him Home, Bring Him Home. Right. <laughs> but I did it for, he is young, he is only a lamb. But in the place that, we, you know the feast. Yeah. Uh, you went, you saw me when I did the Dame Edna, right? What was it? Dame oh, Edna. Dame Edna. But you English saw comedy. saw Soup with Phil Donahue and all the talk show characters, didn't you? No. Okay, well, do you remember the big staircase that went up? Yeah. And Dame There's, Edna, yeah. yeah. We're right up on that balcony. I had... The other friend of mine who was doing the show with me, uh, we had a big, there's there's a big balcony with uh, yeah. rungs and everything, and he was up there and we had a, a black blanket covering one section of it, and as the spotlight shone up in that area, he had a stuffed sheep, and he, it had wing, we'd sew, we'd sew wings on it, and he had it, and he was just kind of going with it, <laughs> and you have to see the video, because he just improv all the little actions, and you know, he just had him moving around, and it just, it was so funny, like, I, there, I seriously, there were tears in people's eyes, it was, oh, wow. and I say that tuning my own horn, it was, uh, <laughs> it was a really funny moment. <laughs> People have asked me to do it in, when I've done shows, uh, what am I trying to think of, shows after that, right. that I've done. And I always say, no, I'll leave it in the moment and I'll let you people remember, because the same people always want to see it again, and I say, mm -hmm. well, to do it again yeah. would really, I'd never be able to recreate exactly yeah. Yeah. what you had. So I let it, better that I let people see it yeah. in their minds. So yeah. it was a lot of fun. But I did that song and I like, I did all, I did, I did a show just uh, last, not last March, but the March before I did Less Miserable, my own take on Les Miserables, <laughs> all about this guy whose name was Lester Miserable. And he uh, just had all this trouble because people always wanted him to do Les Mis songs. And without him trying to do things, his life did parody all the stories. And <laughs> his son or his daughter was just like Fantine or whatever her name was. And she was always trying to die. And his son was little Garrosh. And yes. it was just, a, it was a lot of fun. That got a lot of fun. So you're inter you, you were applying for TMB? Yeah, I'm, I'm working with them uh, this month. What are you going to be doing? Uh, we're doing Young Company, their uh, the tour with uh, junior high schools and high schools. Okay, so are you are you going to be ever at the Imperial? As soon, not with that group, <laughs> but <laughs> but soon enough. Don't worry about that. I've seen, we I haven't seen the Imperial, ticket. but it's my commitment that I'm <sighs> not going to go to the Imperial until I'm on the stage. So oh, it's absolutely beautiful inside. Yeah, it's I've beautiful. Heard, I've heard it's a wonderful performance space. So. But we have four, We have tickets for the year. There's four performances we're going to see, and I'm just wondering if you're in any of those. Probably not. Probably, probably not. not. No. Oh. Probably well, not, no, but no, no, but you never know. Uh, I haven't auditioned for any of their future shows yet. Like, mm -hmm. there's a show coming up in March called The Wild Bunch. It's about four guys who go out for kind of a men's retreat in the woods and they kind of get lost and <laughs> kind of comedy ensues. Yeah. <laughs> yucka yucka. <laughs> so but I was thinking about auditioning for that and since I've now met the director and stuff like that, I think it might be a little bit easier mm. once he sees my style. Mm. But it'll take a while to get get to know the, the way the place is run and mm. to find all the little mm -hmm. ins and whatnot. Mm. To know the part people. But you guys will have much bigger stuff going on this year than I will with Susie. Where's the ring? That's good. No, that's good. <laughs> Grace, you're on. Give us your, show us your pearly whites. Grace, he knows what it needs to be on camera. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the little one. This is Lauren over here. Who finally gets to meet cousin Fred. <laughs> <laughs> and she's quite cute. Lauren. Like her, like her mother. Oh. I like it. <laughs> we had this, we had this babysitter for Grace, and she was always doing this. Hey, it works! <laughs> Gets their attention. And <laughs> she follows well. <laughs> and was extraordinary. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I learned, I was learning things. Man. She is. Ticklish? Yeah, she's still, uh, no, she still is that ticklish? Well, 
two that days a week crazy. after school. She just got she me. picks for herself. <laughs> Oh wow! You're just tuning me out. Any time anytime when we're both out of town, she's she's time, mimicking dad. She's got good concentration. Yeah. That's great yeah. during some overnighters. Wow! Lauren, that's nice to watch an Irish. Yeah, she does. Gracie, you'd buddies. make a great big sister. Oh gosh! I bet you get lots of friends. Future actor you? here. Is I'm gonna go out. Camera on the spot here. Oh, she's Oh, yes. Oh, that's just them. Um, <laughs> there we go. Oh, oh my dear. On camera. Oh, so I, I both look great. Well, I can have to well, I can smell the, the, the And something's cooking. burning out the kitchen, so follow us here for You know what it is, Doris? It's the burners on sky high. All right, then. I'm going to try it. Okay. We we'll only capture sound and video. And, and look over here. Let's see now. This is. Oh, wow. oh, can I have that one for you? Is that mine here? You can have any, any one you want. Linda, this, 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 oh, I want that the, one. Oh, oh my god, I got the big one for you guys. Oh my god, you got that one. So that's going to take a half hour more to cook. Hello! Hi, Dad. Hello. 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 We've got a lot. We've got a lot of cooking. They're great. Yeah. You might have to stay overnight. Hi, Huey. Well, that's what I'm here. I'm going to stay overnight. I'll follow Dan around here. <laughs> she gave me um, just she gave me three cups of milk and she said for two days and then I'm fine. But the first ten days. Oh god, Grace. You said it was on. You got a picture of everybody, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Picture of you, Grace. Oh, 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 big stretch. Big stretch. Oh, I, I was so oh. tired. I couldn't sleep. Grace. So. <laughs> Uh, well, no bunk, problem hey, now. Never mind. Just come to the bunker. I find. Let's see. It's getting to be what? 4:30. The sun's going down. Why do you call your place the bunker? Was it actually a bunker? Yeah. No, no it's just so. I was wondering that too. So solidly built. Got six-inch walls. And there's a storm outside, and you shut the window, and you won't know there's a storm. Oh, my dad built it. He, when he put the floor down, like he measured off the, every square inch. And he nailed it. So anyway, Arthur and them always they call it the bunker because it was just like in a war. I mean, Great. it was built so solid. So then the name stuck with it. So you have the old homestead house. Yeah. Well, it's a little retirement home that our father built. It's still in the bunker, two bedrooms. But Jamie's now a land baron at this real estate deal. Land baron. Did you get your land yet? Or you're still working on it. From where? Well, I think that it's, it's just a matter of getting paper. It's uh, pretty well done. Transfer. So. Is this the land you want to build your cottage on? No, this is woodland, so Robert can go and walk through it. Walk among the trees and hug them and whatever. I think Darcy and Tara have the same situation now. Your land barons now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It feels nice now. Yeah. Wood yeah. You just own a woodlot. I wouldn't know yet, but what's yeah. the by that, you know. by the mill there, across <laughs> the road from the mill property, basically. How yeah. many acres? One's 40 and the other one's 29. Right? Yeah. The other one is if you're standing looking at the front window of the bunker. Yeah. Okay. Just behind here. Yeah. At home, she. I'm just putting Gracie's oh. Paula has all the way. Oh, that's not on yet, Darlin. Look at the size, Paula. Look at the size of this one on here. You make your own. Lauren, they're huge. Look at big. Look at your own. Cousin three. Cousin three. Look at this. Look at this. Look. 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 Smiles for Fred. Maybe the light will do something. Oh, much better than the light. <laughs> Lauren! Oh, little spitty, little spits. Little spits here. Yes. Here, Paula. Not a crisis, we're okay. <laughs> I think I raised oh. me in there. I'm just gonna have them to bend. They're fighting so the nuts like too, wouldn't you? Oh, well, yeah, but. Oh, that's good enough. There. There we okay. go. Well, watch you not get the big ones in there. You have to get her to see the big one. 
data here. Crib is probably safer. Mom is probably uh, safest. I'm trying to take a picture of her when she's smiling and as soon as we get the camera up, she's like, what's that? Mm -hmm. This is, this is this okay. my best escape. So, Huey, what do you think, think of all this? <laughs> I gave that cruise a, a thought yeah. and I wanted to tell you something that was shining on me. <laughs> I thought maybe we could put Huey on stuff. But you know, for 99, we could all go on the cruise and my kids could get married on the boat. We would be back. <laughs> Any comment here, Huey? No, I thought it was a good idea. Ooh, that's good. Get that on tape. On tape? Okay. Yeah, that's good. 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 Yeah, that's good
filling the soil. Well, they're clearing a lot of land. It's not going to be anything to it. Where are they clearing at now? 15 or 19 pounds for the three lobs. The one we had was 7 or 8 pounds. You couldn't eat it all, huh? And I remember Timmy. Timmy would be about 12 or 13 at the time. But Dad took the meat out of one claw and it would be about that thick. Out of this 11 pound one like that. And it was just like a junk of beef, huh? And he said, if you can eat all that, I'll give you five bucks. And he couldn't eat it. We couldn't even that eight or nine pound lobster there, seven or eight, it's almost eight pounds. We couldn't eat all the kids and Doris. We couldn't eat it all. Well, we were there at the market. There was a there was a 16 pound lobster they had that they just they were just cooked it. They had there last week, 16 pounds, with about a hundred dollars worth of meat. And they the guy was the guy said the largest one they had seen there was um, 19 pound lobster. Well, those are Bay of Fundy lobsters. Yeah. So See, the Bay of Fundy season just ended here. Well, the other thing is down in the park off the, you know, down at the Hopewell Cape there and stuff. That's where they get the big ones off there. But here, like, they they, they pull their crafts around the 15th or 18th of December. But if you the driveway, he'd be in Mach 1. What is that they call that? Mach 1 or 2, you know? And I said, well, then he just hit... He'd, he'd take off right about the store. I said, he'd, you know, he'd be lift yeah, off right there. <laughs> no, it's true. Oh, <laughs> poor, poor dad would come by. And he, but he could buy it just the, uh, Very much so. I heard he was. And the thing was, Robert's family kept saying, Scary. God bless him. God must have been looking after him because he never ran into somebody. Oh, okay. We have a flag show. At the time, George and I were sitting there, and he had put the third transmission in that, the, the Toyota uh, station wagon head. And, and you know how how George Smith, he's so, he just sat there and say nothing, and, and he said, Dad said he couldn't figure out, you know, the, 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 the transmissions were no good in that. And George was there, and George just said, well, he said, Fred, it's, it's like this, they wouldn't stand that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> when you torque them up like that, and it just they wouldn't, they wouldn't stand like that. And he said that's from that's from going from from nothing, from zero to so much, so many feet per second in you know in a minute. Huh? Three transmissions. Oh, it's funny, Dad. Tie it here. And you tie and you put a pair of those white you come out twenty pounds lighter. White a white pair of gloves on. <laughs> like a sauna. And then then on my feet I'd take wool socks and sneakers. Oh, and, and, and you know, tie your Older. tie your pants uh, and you'd wait the stream, uh, And put that there and then what you do here is you take Vaseline and put Vaseline all over your face. You know, Vaseline yourself in with a pair of sunglasses. <laughs> And that's it. I'm 31. Because them moose flies, and even them moose flies, you just. And they would get in, but you get some nice fish. So you've been there. Huh? You've been there, I'm not telling you. Yeah. Well, I've been into the big hole several times and beyond it, huh? But haven't been in there for. I left. I left. go, They've got a it's a nice, easy walking trail now. But what's the fishing now? What is it under the fishing? Well, I remember like Robert Are you done, Grace? He, no, when he was a kid, he said the salmon was slapping up against the, the well, boards where they used to throw their milk and yeah. when they went to school down there. Yeah. There's no salmon there right now. No, they used to come right up to the starch factory. Like, they closed the brook off in the top mm -hmm. part, and they'd come right to the, the bottom, and they'd get them right at the bottom of the sluice way. Yeah. But there's trout in there, because I went in there's Barry Nixon. That would have been about last time, seven yeah. years ago. What a time I had to get that oh, thing here. Because oh. it was too long from oh, there to get them out and I had to take them back out again. Oh. Shoot, shouldn't it? Yeah. Once oh, they girl. die, then I can put his body in there first and, mm. and move them around. To die for. <laughs> they are perfect. You don't have to eat it, Grace. They are perfect. This guy's a lot easier than the other one was. Mm. Oh, it's not bad. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Well, put your timer back on again, Doris. That's perfect. I must remember that. How'd you do it? 30 minutes. Well, here. Well, normally they are only 20, but I put the timer, Linda done this, and I set the timer. And we can turn these back up again until they get a boil. Look at, look at this sucker. Just look at look this guy. It. Oh my, look that's at his one claws. lobster. That's one lobster. I had to take him, put him in one side and then in the other, just to get him going. And then once that boils, I hope you don't mind cleaning the stove. No, it's all. <laughs> we my got thing. a little bit of a mess here. Always. Well, so we're all said, and it's we'll December thirty first, twenty five to seven. Still wearing the same top. Oh, Fred, we are. <laughs> and it's just the last dying ages of nineteen ninety nine. No. <laughs> Getting my sister on tape, playing to go and see Dad, okay. who's out there cold, but he took something out to drink to keep him warm. It's New Year's Eve, last day of 1997. I'm going to give Mom her birthday and Mother's Day gift. Very nice, Tara. Yes, a lot of work. Okay, so I'm going to go out and okay, check, out, check out Dad. So I'm coming out. <laughs> so I thought I'd get out here and get this, Dad. Daddy's out here cooking the hamburgers. So I got the hamburgers on. Oh, they look good. Mm -hmm. And Grampy's radio's on. Grampy's got the radio on. They got a little little snapper. <laughs> and it is cold out here. Yeah, it's about uh, six above. Well, it feels. It's pretty cold. It's a lot cold. Well, anyways, New Year's Eve, 1997, and we're going to have supper, and then we're just going to have a relaxing evening. Yes. And I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be good. Yeah. So I'll go in and see what Mom's doing. Yeah. Wow, that was a... Yes, indeed, Fred. This is uh, New Year's Eve, and we're not really dressed, but I think we're just going to stay this way. We've had a busy, busy week. Okay. And we've got the family alone tonight. We're going to really enjoy it. Challenge my daughters to a game of Scrabble. Sounds good. Yes. Kitchen curtains. This is going to be another just quick tour of the house because I want to do another film for insurance purposes, but this will just give a quick view so you don't have to have the long, drawn out jury view. Okay, so that's the kitchen and there were the new curtains that I had made. So I'm very, 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 very pleased with the curtains. They got little apples and stuff like that on them. Anyway, they're very nice and I had her to make them for inside the window. So I'm very happy with the swag. So that's all exciting and everything about the curtains. And now I'm just going to take you out and show you the placemats. So she made excellent placemats. And that was just taking the apple type design and she put like a corking around them. So I'm very happy with those. And there's the little mini blinds that we got for the long windows. I'm very happy with those. And there's the kitchen set. And that's where I was sitting. On the deacon bench. So this has all been seen before. And there's the new couch. And love seat. So I'll just move this chair in. Out of the way. And there's the new couch. Which I'm very pleased with. And bring you around. And there's new verticals, which again we are very pleased with. And 
here is the love seat. So, as you can see, the coach and the love seat go very nicely with the room. Very good choice, Darcy. You are a smart bear. So, again, there's the verticals and the room. So, very nice, cozy family room. We are very happy with it. Okay, and that's about all that's exciting here. We can take you out and show you the new lawn chairs. And then we're going to open the door. And we're just going to head outside for a second. There's a the new barbecue. Darcy's going to barbecue on tonight. There's a the new chairs. And look, Mommy, you got the bird feeder up. And there's the bird feeder that Susan gave me. No little birdies have come to it yet, but I will wait patiently for my little feathered friends. And there's a the barbecue, which we will unveil later when Darcy gets supper rolling. So yes, we are very happy with the bird feeder, Susan. Now, if I only could find little birds that were happy with the bird feeder. Anyway, now I'm going to take you upstairs and show you the bedroom curtains and the in their new bathroom. Here are the shears. Here's our new shears. Triple pleated. it. Excellent. This is where we put the glider rocker and everything into the living room. Nothing too much in here. Just the necessities. Or actually I should say the extras that we have nothing, nowhere else to put. But there's the pop whistle. And I gotta put some more screens up. Four more screens left to clean and windows to clean. But there's our new shears. Very nice. Very nice shears. As you can see, there's just like a little... Kind of, they're called champagne. So anyway. We're very, very happy with our shears. I almost hate to even put a full curtain on that window because I'm just happy with the shears. Anyway, now like I promised, I'll take upstairs to the banana bathroom. the banana bathroom. Can Darcy please turn down his game while I do my commentary here? This is, thanks darling. This is the banana bathroom. Oh, gotta stop for a sec. Okay, we're back. Uh, Darcy didn't have any pants on. He knew that I would be in to look at his new desk that he got. The monstrous desk. Anyway, nothing any, any new exciting here but the banana bathroom. As you can see, we've got a lovely design amongst the sheery type fabric that will not hold dust. Major bonus. So if you come over here and I unveil, aha! And there's the other shower curtain. So as you can see, I'm very happy with my banana bathroom. So anyway, there is the new bathroom, and the new banana colors. And now, into the new office. And there's Scruffy Man, who hasn't shaved in days. Have you there? Cutie. Huh? Cutie booty? Here is his new desk. And a very nice desk, I must say. And there's my little teeny weeny eeny weeny desk. And there's Darcy's big monstrous desk. And he's playing a little game. So he's relaxing. So Darcy, just move aside for a second so they can see the front of the desk. See? Look at that. Aeronomically correct. I, I, ISO 9000. Certified. Correct, Donald? Yep. Yep. So we're very pleased. And I just redid all our files. I gotta show you. Excuse me. Look at that. Look at that. Everything in there. All our statements. That was my little project for the weekend. Anyway, I know. I'm disgusting. 
So, anyway, here is a new desk. And that's where our new tab drape's gonna go. But our new tab drape is in here. There it is hanging. But it will go on a wooden pole. And there are the ends of the pole. So, anyway, that's not gonna come yet. Because I forgot the pole! I had everything but the darn pole when I left on Saturday. So anyway, now I'm going to bring you into the master bedroom. Okay, and here is the new master bedroom. With the lovely new curtains. Everything this looks ticky boo. And here are the new curtains. So I'll try to get out of the glare of the light. And as you can see what she did with the top there. Very well gathered. Very difficult to get on because there's so many gathers. Anyway, I'm going to just move over here. I don't know. We're getting light every which way. So this isn't working very well. Anyway, if you could see the curtains, they would look nice. <laughs> oh, there goes my... Uh... So anyway, I guess if I get far away and get out of the glare of the window. Anyway, that's what the new curtains look like. Which we are very happy with. And you've already seen. Oh, there goes my. <gasps> There's all the little critters. Aren't they nice? They're just so well behaved. And you know what? They just sit there all the time and they don't say a word. Okay. Gotta get out more. And of course, you've seen the bathroom. So, nothing new and exciting in here. But that's the topper. That's the topper they got in here. It's just a little tiny thing. So, we may just do something different with that. Anyway, now I'm going to take you down in the basement and show you all the hard work that Darcy has been doing with the suspended ceiling and his new drip rock ceiling. Actually, here, I'm just going to put a little clip in here. Hmm, forgot the fade. Anyway, that was the hunter blinds that we got for just a little half bath. Pad a room when you first come into the there's me, boy, and there's the stairs behind me. So anyway, now I will take you downstairs. Okay, this is what Boo Bear did. He put in a whole new suspended ceiling down here in the exercise room. Okay, he did an awesome job. That's where he built all the casings for around the pipes. So he did an excellent job there. And as you can see, he started all the drywalling. And he and he built all the pipe casing around there. And he filled in there with gyp rock where the tank is behind there, the pipe to the septic tank. And he's got that all filled in. And then he built a little door down here because we have to be able to get in for our tank. And there's a little tank alert up there. So, and he hooked up all his receptacles, say that word Tara, so he's going to put like a little swinging door I think on there, and he hooked up all the receptacles in here, so yeah, so he did an excellent job with this ceiling, and that was our new light we got, which you probably hard to see because it's on, but yeah, he did excellent, he did an excellent job. So, there, give you an overall look, and take you into the other room, and here is where he has, or we have, I should say, starting putting up our ceiling in the, in the um, games room. So, he's been doing an excellent job in here too, and there's all our paint. We got tons and 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 more and more and lots of more paint. There was our barbecue and there was the box that Darcy's desk came in. So anyway, yeah, so here is the um, ceiling in here. So we're quite happy with that. 
the dartboard, which we don't get a lot of use out of yet. And there's Darcy's new chainsaw. Ooh. Whoops. Ah. Oh. Mac 3516. So yes, yeah, so he has to be very, 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 very careful with that. So yes, this is going to look really, 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 really nice. Let's get to finish that off. That's where our sunken family room is. So yeah, so this is going to look really, 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 really nice when this is done. And as you can see, I have paraded all the paint down there. That's it. My first flower blooming in my flower bed. Now we're not sure what else we're gonna find in here. I think it's mother greenery type stuff happening. But ain't they pretty? Ain't they pretty? So that one is about to bloom. So as you can see, it's a little rocky. But, if you keep coming down here, again, another greeny type thing. Oh, that started. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. But, look. Look, 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 look. Look, 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 and they're pretty. Now, how long, how long will they last is the question. But, hopefully a while. And, here, look at that. Look at that. So anyway, it's my flower bed. So we're not really sure what's going to come of it. But we're quite interested to see what will come of it. And that's our new hose. And a little reel. And there used to be two trees right there. Actually, actually sorry, three trees, I think. And, uh... Now they reside there, so we're not really sure what we're going to do with them yet. And there's my driveway, there's the car. There's your driveway. Anyway, so that just gives you a look. We're going to get this fixed up over here in the yard. I did some raking today and got rid of some rocks and stuff around. But this is all going to be filled in. That's our leaching field up there. For the septic tank. I guess we're supposed to have that hydro seeded or seeded. So you'll notice that there, oh well, I'm staying in the septic tank right here, and that pipe comes out where that mound is, and then it's like a T, and that's our leaching field for our septic tank. As you can see, we're going to need quite a few loads of fill in here, and we're going to take it, and that tree is dead. But as you can see, there's quite the nest in it. So, but I haven't seen anything flying out of it, so I don't think it's in use. So anyway, but no, we're going to have to get all this filled in, get that big rock cleaned off. And there's my side of the house. Sorry. It's our side of the house. You know, we did both by the house. That's where Darcy, uh, had the tree fall on. Actually, there might be a little teeny weeny dent in these drops, but that's pretty good for a tree falling on the house. Yes, that was exciting, and I'm glad I was able to witness it. But yeah, as you can see, we're going to oh, put that tree down. Going to cut that up once we get a not-so-windy day. But that's all going to be filled in, filled in, filled in. All around the back is going to be filled in. All that's going to be filled in. Filled in, filled in. And we might, right there, we see that birdhouse in that tree, we might clear back a little more back there to kind of even up where it's cleared over there. And we're going to take, this is the drainage pipe for our foundation. Whoops. And we're going to have to do like a French drain with that. Put some rock around it and bring it out. There's a big boulder. So anyway. That's the, that's the scoop on what's going on here. There's our back deck with our BBQ and our little bird feeder. And the back room blinds. So those are just the back room pleated blinds that we got. 
pretty basic and neutral, but we're very pleased with them. And next week, Paulette should have my, sorry, our spare room uh, ensemble done and mommy's room. And she should have the, oh, actually, that's it. That's all she has left to do. And, of course, pick up the uh, pole for the tab drape. So, anyway, there is your quick tour of the house. Okay, this is for the insurance company if anything should ever happen to what we own, which I wouldn't like that to happen. So anyway, there's a share system, a VCR, our TV, my Royal Daltons. Oh, you can see me in the window. So anyway, and of course. Mega. Oh, it's only videotapes. Play videotapes. And that supports all my music. Fair bit of music. And there's our work blinds. Our diplomas. Of course, the love seat, the table, and all the crystal living on the table, and there's the lens pictures, etc, 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 couch, blankets, all my irreplaceable pictures, a little bit, my sheep, anyway, so that gives you a quick look at the family room. Okay. So that is the family room. Okay, here's the kitchen. Deacon bench. Water cooler, crock, just a phone, limited edition, Captain Kind Mum, thermal thermostat, our fridge, Kenmore, special edition. That's our fridge, and there's some pottery, and all our oak cupboards. Glass, spices, toaster oven, pretty dry, eh? Of course there's all the kitchen plates and everything, bowls, etc. Stove, etc, etc, knives. Good knives, blender, of course my nice new curtains that were custom made, microwave, etc, 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 glasses, etc, 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 lots of expensive Perdurno pots and everything like that. So there is a quick look at kitchen. Okay, mat, stove, etc. And light fixture. Oops. There we go. What's a beautiful oak set. The cushions and everything. And no stool. Many blinds. Chandelier. Okay. That's all she wrote here. Okay, now we're going out into the foyer. 
to the lock stand, the light, cell phones, pager, glasses. <laughs> Here's our clock. Nice mat. Some stuff on brain gummies. And a rocking chair. Oak. Magazine rack. Halogen lights. My snowman. Of course, all my irreplaceable pictures. China roses. Picture frames. Etc. 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 Irreplaceable cross stitch. Our five hundred some dollar shears. Papa saw. And then my irreplaceable wedding cross stitch again. So, anyway, that's the living room. Front to foyer. To make a picture. Painting. Sue me this little crafty thing. Light. Have a room. Nothing too exciting in here. Of course, there are blinds. My angel. Okay. It's a powder room. New washer and dryer and sears. Baskets, mops, and all our storage. Okay, that's my little clock. So, who said this is supposed to be exciting for the insurance company? And hopefully, you will never, ever, ever, ever have to use this tape. So that's just inside the foyer here, inside the closet. Okay. Here's the wedding pictures going upstairs. Okay. And there's our graduation photos. And we're coming upstairs. Again, we've got photos of here. Okay. We're going to the bedroom. Just the drawers, TV fan. Stuff here. Books, phone, okay, Captain Kind's mom, and new curtains, bed skirt, new bed skirt, and quilt and everything, my costage, irreplaceable. Okay, just the drawers. Okay, this is our closet. Suits galore, pants galore, and dresses and outfits and everything galore. Okay, and of course the bathroom. Which we've all seen. There's nothing too exciting here. Pretty standard stuff. Stand up shower. Okay. That's it. Pretty standard stuff. Not the most. Okay, so that would be the bedroom. Okay, 
Okay, spare room, room board, etc. Okay, just got the junk up here. Watch oh, something junk. Expensive dresses and clothes and everything. And some rods, etc., 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 etc. Okay, and then I get my picture from vacuum cleaner, electric lux. Okay, and a new blind, paid a blind. And all our suitcases. Let's put it here. Okay, in here, basically, chair, curtains with a pleated blind behind there, double bed. Okay. In here, powder room, or sorry, main bathroom. Okay, which you've all seen in here, because I just taped it all. Got their new curtain, and shower curtain. Okay. And then, of course, we've got in here the office for all the expensive stuff wise. And we've got all of our games, all our textbooks. That's just a fair piece of money, a bit of money there. Morning cabinets. That's a new big expensive desk. To make a picture. Okay. Where's the window? Boomerang from Australia. Anyway, that's the gist of here. And here's the closet. So I've got a fair bit of stuff in here. Okay, there's his bag, camera. And all my stamp albums. And all the games. Okay, so that would be it for upstairs. Oops. <laughs> anyway, I can make a photo. And we'll move out. And that's it. Okay. Now I'm going to take us downstairs. To make a photo. I already got that. Okay, we're going downstairs into the basement. This is where definitely some expensive stuff is. There's his weight bench. Step machine. TV, cutter, cutter, cutter. I just redid the ceiling. I think you've already got all that on tape anyway. Fan. Trunk. Balloons. Okay, and then let's just get in here. Cordless phone. Furnace. Air exchanger, UV filter. Right, pump. Okay, pump. Air pump and all that stuff. There's his table saw, shop back, his drill, and he's got all his little stuff hanging up there. All the new stuff that we bought. All the new stuff that he bought. Fortune tools and everything, bench grinder. Okay. Dim the tool man tailor. Okay. 
Okay, so let's just stop there. Need an air changer. Storage. Okay, that's storage. Okay. And of course you see this room, which doesn't have a whole lot, it has a lot of paint in it. Just redoing the ceiling. And the bikes. Okay. Okay, we left things. Ladder, chainsaw. Table. Okay. Let's, of course, the whole security system is installed. Dartboard behind there. Okay. That's basically it. And then you start doing the ceiling. Okay, and then we've got the old tape. And paint. Okay. And then barbecue we bought. And that's just the security system that he installed. Just want to make sure that's credited for it. In case that thing should be destroyed when someone tries to break in. So anyway, that's it for the tour for insurance purposes. Hope that's all inclusive.